Hello and welcome everyone. So we were doing a video on construction safety and we listed events as well. Thank you for your support. And again, after a long time, uh, requests have started coming to post the videos in Hindi as well. But as you can understand that, you know, I want most of the people to understand the video. So I'm putting it in English. We'll try to uh, simplify it to you know a level where everybody can understand i don't know, i don't think that i have i have you know to kept the language so difficult that people cannot understand so i try and record the videos in the simplest of the english language possible yes the technical words will remain the same technical words are always same maybe hindi or english right so you have to understand that and today what we are going to do is today we are going to have you are all aware of the nine elements that were listed and today's element that i have selected is one of a very unique uh, you know uh, topic and that is electrical safety during usage of temporary electrical installation now there is a lot of you know confusion regarding this there is a lot of uh, you know legalities associated to this there are a lot of you know how how to manage this electrical safety because this is the first thing whenever you go on as soon as the site starts in construction electricity electricity or electrical you know safety comes into picture so let us see what is there in this and i have tried just simplify it uh, you know to a very basic level in this video yes if you guys really want then i can definitely take it to a next level also and you have to understand this this element itself is again an eight hour session but i have tried and minimize it to a lower level and try, i'll just try and summarize it in as short video as much possible right so let us see what is there so first electrical uh, installation are often you know required uh, to be designed and erected for the use of short period of you know time ranging in few hours few months few and you know supply can be from source or open ground now it is particularly true that construction sites where you know uh, green fields are there or you know ground field project are there so all these projects they require uh, specific uh, electrical installation types so based on that the electrical uh, installation requirements and electrical you know specifications are also been met now such installation primarily you know the electrical installation can be you know categorized you know in following ways first the installation can will be like if any construction activity is going on so the installation will be required for some workshop right workshop or a manufacturing facility or you know anything that is to be constructed so it can be a workshop it can be an office it can be a residential building or uh, you know the second category is the equipment inside a substation or powerhouses overhead lines underground cables so all these are you know whatever may be the typical installation the broad principle or precautions are the same the objective uh, to ensure the safety of uh, you know person and equipment is more required now everybody is aware of what is electric shock right so i don't re need to repeat it but yes i'll just give you a brief on that electric shock basically shock occurs when a body comes in a part of electric circuit everybody knows that right so the current must enter the body at one point and level and leave at another point correct so shock may occur in one or three ways so first you have to understand these three ways how shock can occur first with both wires of the electric circuit so there can be two wires of an electric circuit so that can generate a shock then with one wire of an energized circuit and the ground so there will be an energized circuit and a ground and the third is with a metallic part that can become live by itself in contact with an energized wire so these are three possibilities how electric shock can occur on a construction site now what can be the severity so severity of the shock depends on first 
the flow rate rate flow of current through the body measured in amperes the path of current through the body and the length and time the body in the circuit so i have explained you three parts up uh, of how electric shock can happen and what can be the severity so the major risk in the use of power in such installation arises when a short circuit resulting from in fire incident or explosion of live wire resulting in shock so these are the possibilities now it is therefore imperative rather you know it is uh, to lay down some necessary precaution to observe such installation from the point of view of safety correct so you need to understand some more basics on it and to understand those basics you first and you first must understand the legal and the compliances so let us so the electricity rule 2005 so now electricity rule has been you know covered in 11 chapters in all now chapter 4 for general safety requirements and chapter 5 covers general rules and applic- uh, rules applicable to all classes of installation chapter 6 covers rule applicable to low and medium voltage installation supply and use while chapter 7 covers rule applicable to high and extra high voltage installation chapter 8 deals with the provision to rule applica- applicable to overhead lines and underground cables and chapter 10 deals with the provision of rules applicable to mines and oil fields so i have explained you what electrical safety rule 11 chapters are all about and where where you need to look into <coughs> correct now let us understand central electricity electricity authority that is cea rules so generally known as cea regulations now construction and standards if we talk of construction standards so cea regulation that is central electrical electricity authority technical standard for construction and electrical plants and electrical lines regulation 2010 was formulated there you need to see St- safety standards for construction and onm so first is central electricity authority safety requirements for construction operation and maintenance of electrical parts and electrical lines regulation in 2011 similarly measuring relating to safety and electric supply regulation 2010 same cea then third is the uh, connectivity standards so technical standards for connectivity to the grid amendment in regulation 2013 new and the technical standards for conduct, uh, conductivity of the distributed general resources comes under this and the third part is the technical standard for connectivity for grid regulation 2007 also covers under this so why i am giving you these standards these are the basic standards that you need to refer when it if you if you are talking about the connectivity standards and these standards are the basic standards they they actually explain so there are updates also in this now when we talk of operation standards so central electricity authority grid standards regulation 2010 comes into picture when we talk of metering regulations so you have to look into central electricity authority installation and operation of meters amendment in regulation 2010 now similarly if you are looking at uh, and the second part is uh, central electricity authority installation and operation of meters regulation 2006 that you need to refer now uh, the next point is transaction of business regulations so when we talk of transaction of business regulations central electrical authority procedure for transaction of business regulation 2006 has to be referred now you have to first understand that all these things are actually related to what all these things are actually related to the temporary installation of essentially classified on based on the duration of the installation that is to be done so when we talk of temporary installation okay so temporary installation uh, for a duration not exceeding 6 months is first that those installation are like outdoor installation open to sky practically uh, you know covered erect Uh, erected in uh, you know vicinity of construction site solely for the purpose of supply of electrical needs of building construction work uh, such as lighting and 
power loads so these are the temporary uh, you know durations that you can take for 6 months now temporary installation not not exceeding 45 days so these installations are fairly large loads such as exhibitions and fairs etc so the for the Uh, temporary installation for up to 45 days are available now temporary installation for the duration not exceeding 7 days so these installations are site of temporary nature intended for a week long public function or outdoor lighting installation of building and part in view of festival and other reasons so that is that is up to 7 days now again temporary installation duration not exceeding 24 hours so these installation are temporary installation which can cater loads for a purpose of you know marriage reception religion or other public functions so these are for 24 hours now general requirement for temporary installation are first substation so in case the load requirement for a temporary installation are large powers and power supply authority has no uh, network in the vicinity of the temporary installation that could be utilized then it would be necessary to establish temporary substations where the switch and transformer can be installed now the substation uh, site shall be so selected that it is as close to the load center as possible the power supply authority line should be brought up to the substation in a separate enclosure if overhead line is laid up to the temporary station there uh, then the supporting poles conductors materials of the line ins- uh, insulation and the matter of uh, you know stringing the conductors and the mechanical strength of the line as a whole shall be confirmed to the relevant provision of is 5613 part 1 section 1 1970 and is 5613 part 1 section 2 of 1971 now these are some basics now in case the supply voltage above 650 volts is required a suitable enclosure to the installation switch here and the metering uh, you know arrangement shall be erected now power distribution if we talk of power distribution so at the origin of each installation unit consisting of the main control gear and principal you know protective devices shall be provided the means uh, switch to be installed in an enclosure right now the means of temporary switching shall be provided to supply all you know current using the equipment on which it may be necessary to disconnect all live conductors in order to remove the hazard now the mains switches shall be located at a height not exceeding 1.5 meters so as to access uh, so as to be accessible in emergencies now why i am telling you all this because this is also part of you know when whenever you are on a construction site so all these things are to be kept in mind so now let us talk of some more and then then comes you know uh, there are some uh, briefings about the uh, control circuits then sub circuits earthing requirements are there so you have to understand the basic now earthing is very requir- uh, very much uh, required so you must understand that now protection and safety let us talk on the protection and safety part of it so let us talk of some basics first so when the installation of hole shall be you know uh, the uh, against the overhead or a short circuit and earthing leakage suitable protective devices should be available now temporary supply is generally used for public places and public functions and therefore extreme care should be taken to ensure that there is no risk of any type of hazard either from electric shock or fire no flammable material shall be stored near the service intake point or the operational area of electrical equipment or appliances so the large public functions or exhibitions you know suitable fire fighting uh, provision shall be kept at supply intake point and near the main switch of the installation the construction site Uh, protection of person against indirect contact shall be assured 
by automatic disconnection of supply appropriate to the system earthing socket outlet shall either be protected by uh, residual current devices uh, having you know operating current not exceeding 30 milliampere or be supplied at safety extra low voltage or electrical separation of circuit each shock outlet you know socket outlet bring supply by separate transformer now transformer are used uh, to you know upgrade or downgrade the electrical voltage correct so now this color coding of single phase wiring are as follows first earthing wire is identified as green color phase wire is identified as red color and common wire is represented by black color so you have to always understand if you unless until you do this color coding kind of a arrangement you know you put any damn wire in it so don't 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 do that there is a specific color code to it so that it is you know recognizable by any electrical person so you whenever you are working on a construction site you have to ensure that the color coding is at least you know followed now color coding for three phase wire are as follows first earth wire is identified by green color three phase wire consisting of three wires following colors that is red blue and yellow so now generally live wires are made out of copper material uh, because it is the best conductor of electricity so you have to always make sure that it is there now uh, we'll just discuss on you know uh, some points which are right first hd lines refers to high tension voltage lt lines refers to low tension voltage so general voltage of single phase is up to 230 volts in india generally uh, voltage for three phase supply is of uh, greater than 440 volts earthing resistance in a circuit should not be less uh, should be as less as possible generally 2 to uh, 0 to 2 ohms now bare wire loose connection in supply plugs can lead to electric shock so electric spark causing fire as well as tripping hazard therefore wire should be properly insulated so the best fire extinguisher to be used in case of you know electrical fire in general is co2 or abc type uh, dcp type or abc type of fire extinguisher confirming to the relevant indian standard shall be provided as per site requirement now the severity of electric shock depends upon the amount of current flow in the uh, circuit correct so let us try and understand first that why we are talking this first human resistance of dry skin so see people who are sweating the resistance will change but human resistance of dry skin is up to 10 to 600 kilo ohms electric shock of 50 milliampere to 80 milliampere can lead to a fatality you have to understand this now to prevent electric shock type which type of hand gloves to be used so you should always use rubber hand gloves now rubber hand gloves must be at least 20 mega ohms of resistance or insulated hand gloves no uh, also while working on site elcb that is earth leakage circuit breaker elcb should be used so that if any short circuit the elcb trips and supply to the equipment thus preventing the damage to the equipment and the also to the shock now we will discuss on you know some i'll just give you some more brief on this and so why why we are using all this see any electrical uh, installation or any electrical supply equipment that you are going to use on site we have to first understand why we are using it right so the core aim is only one and that is to protect a human life so whenever we are you know putting temporary cables or you know temporary uh, cable laying is happening so what happens construction site because there is a lot of movement all the wires are not you know properly uh, you know cable trade or properly you know sent so what happens they break and when they break what happens the current leak in the uh, floor or you know the land and that leads to a greater health risk or hazard uh, hazardous atmosphere so it is very much required that you understand the first basic of electrical safety so whenever you are laying 
if at all the commercials permit make sure that you put it in a pipe or you know an insulated pipe or something like that and if not so then at least don't put joints and if you're putting joints then take them up put a pole kind of arrangement take them up join them and then run them back so that and tie them right and if even if you have to make joints make the connection joints fuse joint kind of arrangements and joining is like cable jointing is like one of the biggest uh, issues that we have on construction site because we always well you know you just take the wires and you just uh, put electric tape over it and it is safe no it is not safe so first and foremost thing is try and avoid as much joints as much possible make sure that electrical proper uh, equipment or you know the supply gauges are available with you you should have you know proper extension wires for uh, providing the uh, sub connections to for any activity that is going to happen okay so i hope uh, you have liked the video till now if you have uh, liked it and if you have seen it by now keep liking and sharing and do not forget to subscribe our channel thank you very much friend we'll keep on sharing more and you can understand the topic is big i have to summarize it to a very crisp level i love your feedback keep writing to us Thank you again.